What do I do? How do I friends? I don't know how to friends. I woke up late today. Actually, I do that every day. So welcome back everyone to Dr. Charmander Gaming. I'm Dr. Charmander and we're going to continue with Dream Daddy. I know some of you might be wondering what happened to Life is Strange. It reminds me too much of people I'm working with in real life. And I uh, really wanted to go into something fun. I will get back to it, but for now, we're going to see how my dating life is going as a dad. I do some light cleaning around the house before I decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget that you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Okay. Oh right, Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. I hope they have a fun night. I'm really glad Amanda has such sweet friends, even if I can never remember their names. Aw, that's sweet. Just as I'm heading toward my room, the doorbell rings. Who could possibly need anything from me right now? Do they know what time it is? I was just about to head out, and the sky changed dramatically within that span of time. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello. A handsome, clean clip man stands, by, stands at my door, branching a plate of cookies. I love cookies! Hello! Hi, I know it's kinda late, but I baked way too many cookies, and I just can't have these in the house or I'll eat them all. What a, what a sad state of affairs, someone showing up to my door late at night with cookies. Yes. Oh, here are my manners. My name is Joseph. I'm your next door neighbor. Oh, yes, hi, I'm Iron. That's what my name is. <laughs> I really should have thought of another name. <laughs> um, I saw the moving van and thought I'd do the neighborly thing and bring you some. Uh, bring you some. Whoops. My daughter Christy wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. Oh, everyone here has adorable little daughters. Joseph leans in and whispers, Between you and me, she just sprinkled in chocolate chips. Aww. <laughs> we both share a laugh. Kids, right? Amanda pokes her head out of the room and immediately hones in on the cookies. Whoa, wild cookies, huh? So nice to meet you. Joseph hands her the plate of cookies with a smile. Well, thanks for the cookies. <laughs> Amanda disappears with the cookies. Well, Amanda come back. She's gone. That's my daughter. Her name is Amanda. She's a charmer. Mm. <laughs> Loves them cookies. Daughters are tough. Sons are also tough. Mm. Children in general are just tough. Someone having a rough time? I hear that. I mean, there'd have to be something wrong with you to try and raise more than two. I have four kids. Oh, awkward. What? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. I meant, don't worry, you didn't mean to be rude, but I was, I was so rude. Oh no, this is the first neighbor I've met in my social life already, it's in a tailspin. I wonder if it's too late to move again. <laughs> Moving is such a pain though. Uh, yeah, okay. Right. Is the missus around? Uh, Mr. actually, and uh, no. Not anymore. He died. There you go. Right back at me for being rude. Oh. Uh. I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. Now we've both been rude to one another and it's totally fair. No, no. It's alright. Wow. This is uncomfortable. <laughs> Stand here quietly for a moment. Acutely aware of how awkward we both made things. <laughs> that would be me. I'm sorry. Can't you just... Can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically, but comply. After a second, I hear a knock on the door opening as you just stand there with a huge oh. smile. Hey, I, <laughs> I didn't even have to stop talking about your dead spouse this time. I'm throwing a barbecue. <laughs> I'm throwing a barbecue for her the cul de sac, and I'd love for you to come by and meet the rest of the neighbors next me. What do you say, pal? That sounds great. My daughter Amanda and I would love to stop by. That was great. That was fantastic. <laughs> also, four kids is a perfectly normal amount of children to have. We shake our hands to seal the deal. <laughs> Little neighbor, how about you get to bed? I'll see you at 3 p.m. on Saturday. Oh, that was great. I love all these people and their weird meetings. <laughs> sure thing, neighbor. I would ask someone to do that. Oh my god. 
Just as Tosakime but stops for a second and turns around. Hey, in all seriousness, raising on your own can be, can't be easy. If you ever need to talk about stuff, I'm a youth min- oh. I'm a youth minister, youth minister at a church down the street. Well, that's nice. It's so sweet. Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't really consider myself a youth. You look pretty young to me, but suit yourself. Dodgy! <laughs> and with that, Joseph's gone. Amanda walks back into the living room, crumbs on her face and cookie in hand. She looks fine to me, by the way. That was the smoothest recover I've ever seen. I should be taking notes. See, you're already fitting in great. Where'd those cookies go? They are gone. I am sorry. If it makes you feel better, they weren't very good. That's why they're- <laughs> So you ate all of them anyway. The Emma's helped. Right. Well, kiddo, I'm gonna catch the game. Have fun, Dad. Should've asked him to catch the game with me or tell me where I could go- Well, no, he's a youth minister. Joseph seemed like a nice guy. Probably wouldn't know any fun bars to catch the game at. Um, wow, I guess I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not j entirely sure where the closest bar is and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone. I was about to say. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick a direction and walk it in, like, well, okay. Let's go this way. Cool, okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really. In the distance, could it be? Oh, thank God, Jim and Kim's. A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny dive bar. Yay, what a wonderful town with delicious coffee and a dive bar all within walking distance. I can dream. The bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of pool balls sounds in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. <laughs> Do they both exist? Do I get to meet Jim and Kim? I pull up a seat at the bar. What'll it be? One whole beer, please. Sure thing, boss. Did I see him? Did he go away? Okay, I think I'm hallucinating. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly turn my attention to the game, which is playing in one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good, good thing. That's wonderfully vague. <laughs> my team of preference. <laughs> Someone's at the door. My cat litter delivery. I'm so cool. Um, brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with the fan of the opposing team. This was written by a by a gamer robot person. I'm going to read it as such. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. <laughs> I love how this is written. It's just so like, there is a game, and I vaguely understand how games work and how teams are, and is this all an elaborate allusion to sexual preference? I don't know. Hey. Hey, a middle-aged woman holding a near-empty wine glass sidles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Hmm. Oh, hello. Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? No, actually, I just moved to this part of town today. I'm Iron, by the way. Uh. Are you watching the game? Yeah, my preferred team is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh. oh, I love that team. And also, I love the game in... I love someone who knows their way around balls. This is getting ridiculous. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Uh, mm. buy a gala drink? I mean, she's already a little drunk. I don't want to send the wrong messages, so I'm sorry. Uh, maybe some other time. Suit yourself, sailor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. 
Awkward. I happily watched the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little too close than what I'm comfortable with. After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon! He sits alone, sipping whiskey, and watching the game as well. Woo! Enjoying the game? I am now that we're winning. Oh, must be we must be rooting for different teams. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I have to disagree with that. Based on upon our win-loss record, I say that my team is superior. That's where you're wrong, since as it stands right now, my team is beating yours. The conversation ends there. We go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to the win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet tears ripple through the bar. Throughout the bar, I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in response. An unspoken truce is formed between us. A mutual love for the game. He motions to the bartender who pours two glasses of whiskey, and the man, ah, the man slides one over to me. So I'm gonna drink me some whiskey. Personally, can't really do too much. Wait, no. Is pickle bag a whiskey and pickle juice? I can't remember. I want to say yes, but all the times that I have been drinking that, it's usually my third one, third drink of the night, so I can't really remember. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Iron. I'm going to regret that name forever. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Robert chuckles. Oh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town, as slimy as it is. I was like, I can't be there, so I can't tell if the bar top is sticky, but that's how- that's- that's, uh, whatever. Um, as slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or a Kim that runs this place? Hi. No, that'd be Neil. <laughs> Neil waves from across the bar. I hear you're talking about me. I'm going to interject into your conversation. Good guy, Neil. Not enough Neils in this world. Okay. Okay. You a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Well, seeing as how I've been drinking beer all night. Beer, but I'll drink most things. Uh, <laughs> that's another good thing to say to a stranger. But that's maybe just my experience in bars. You like shots? Oh, goody, we're gonna get trashed! I like shots. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. I wanted to get, like, yummy shots. Let's do some chocolate cake and gummy bears. Lemon drops. I'm such a sugary drinker. Um, here's to your health. This is the opposite of what that will do for me, but okay. We take the shots. The whiskey burns going down. But I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, what make- I think this is what making friends is! Okay, Iron. This guy's out of my friend league, but if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. Problem is, hand tattoo. What do I do? How do I friends? I don't know how to friends! Uh, well, I could just talk about looking at your hands. I like your tattoo. What does it mean? I also like your hands. It's a reminder. Ooh, crud. I wait for him to elaborate, but it seems like he's done talking. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. I hope I didn't hit a nerve. Oh. Way cooler than I am, at least. I'm pretty not cool. Robert sings the bartender for another round. Oh, shoot. What are you doing here tonight? <laughs> Running from my problems! Um, let's be honest about my daughter. Not like forever, she was having a sleepover with her friends. Family type, huh? Did he just soften? Did I make his Grinch heart grow? <laughs> Single dad. Oh man, here we go! Let's play up the pity because I can't do the cool card, I can do the sad card. Hmm. He gets up. You're right back. Gotta powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Ha! I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. I love my external validation! 
Mark comes back in the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Why are you leaving? We just had like a shot. I thought you said you liked shots. Plural. Don't do this, man! Alright, right, leave the bar and we find ourselves walking the same direction. Oh. <laughs> I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Man, this barbecue is going to be hilarious. Does everybody live there? <laughs> Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Hey. Great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Iron. So are we doing this or... Whoa! <laughs> That's not what I was trying to do. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> huh? Oh. Uh, wave realization. I blush. Um. Uh. 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 <laughs> I just happened to walk home at the same time. I just thought we were being friends. I don't know how to be friends. Instead, I get laid. What a terrible problem. Uh, I don't want to do this yet. I'd better call it a night. Catch you around? Sure. <laughs> like, whoa! Whoa, 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 I like doing shots with random people. It's kind of fun, but <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That was pretty crazy. Um, I head home. Head buzzing with whiskey. What did he mean by are we going to do this or not? You know what he meant. Don't even... Don't even lie. I plop down on the couch and I'm asleep before I even get the chance to take my shoes off. Oh, that was close! Um, I wake up next to a text from an unknown number. Did I give out my number last night? Craig, rise and shine, early birds still want to work out. <laughs> no. Not working out with a hangover. This is Craig, by the way. Holy crap, it's 6am. Who does 6am anymore without realizing that I drift back to sleep? Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. Hey bud, still wanna get your soul on? I'm ready to tear the track off the track. Hit me up. No, God, the last thing I wanna do right now is work out. It is Craig. I do wanna catch up. Oh, this is gonna be the worst gym trip ever. I wanna know how my friend is doing. Can he hang out? Like, literally any other time than 6 a.m. How about we do brunch? That's like 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, maybe? Come on. Uh, I'm gonna go to the gym. Nice. Hey man, I need a few minutes to wake up. Let's meet in 20. I have three seconds. Another text sent in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. I stretch and my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I throw off my blanket and, hey, wait a minute. I don't remember falling asleep with the blanket. My daughter sweet and man must have tucked me in after I fell asleep. Bless that child. I reluctantly brush my teeth. They're on the only clothes I own that are even kind of gym appropriate and head out. Oh, what am I thinking? This is a terrible idea. The neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me. Of course, he passed me and... Waves enthusiastically. <laughs> hey, bro. Good morning. Hey, good to see you, man. I definitely... I'm definitely not as pumped as he is. Maybe I should have had some coffee before I left. I'm like, the coffee shop is right here. This is the same background for everything. It's just... Do you work out before or after you have coffee? I personally have to do it before or else my tiny heart will explode. You ready to kick some butt? <laughs> This is it. This is how I die. Nice. Oh, it'll be alright. Wait, why is the black stuff popping up? Am I offending them? I don't want to offend anybody. I just want to be friends. Oh, it'll be alright, dude. We'll ease you into it. We head into the gym and I'm immediately intimidated. All those, these people look like they could break me in half. And it seems like Craig is friends with all of them. Oh. He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money and spend it on protein shakes. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. It's fine. Everyone's fine. See how friendly they are with everybody? No one's gonna hurt you. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. Oh, good. We head over to the treadmills and start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent pace to be. Walking. I can walk. You can walk. We can all walk forever if that's the only thing we do. This is a workout! So, I know we're on treadmills. 
Ah, yes. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And those over there are ellipticals. I can name things in a gym! Very good. What is all this other stuff? Craig laughs. Hey. They might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I watch as you do in a muscle he flexes a muscle I didn't know existed on a machine. I think I once used to process grain into flour. <laughs> Link was once used. Oh my goodness. What is that? What is this guy doing? Why why is that guy doing that to himself? Nice. That's a good question, bro. What do you think he's doing? We're so violent. Here, we'll just do pain on myself. There's a tiny man in there, right? Did he do something that the court found unfavorable and now that muscular dude is doling out justice in a form of pain? What? Oh no, Craig is turning up speed. I better do the same. No, don't do this! This is the worst way to work out! Don't do it! Don't do competitive workouts! Um, how, uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? A couple of years. What do you do when you're not dadding or working out or buffing? Oh, I coach my twin softball team. This still counts as both dadding and buffing. I keep busy. What do you do for fun? Look, I'm gonna answer like I do. I love learning. I try to educate myself about the world around me. I'm like a sponge for knowledge, soaking up all the intellectual content. You know history, the paranormal, wilderness survival, uh, aliens, mostly those things. I wish that wasn't so accurate to myself. It's like this game was made by other gamers. Thank you, Game Grumps! So you watch the History Channel too, huh? Yes. <laughs> Aww! We're jogging now. We're, oh god, we're jogging now. <laughs> Look over at Craig who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying! I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Hmm. Hey, remember when my fish died at college? That's random. <laughs> no! I don't like this story. Oh. oh my god, is he really bumping up his feet again? I guess I better do it too. No, 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 no! This is this is how I teach everyone boundaries. Don't do it! Work up for you! Anyway. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Oh. And we're at the party and you vowed to make me feel better. You tell me to create a distraction, so of course I stick... Do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. He's trying to distract me. He's trying to distract me from running and it isn't working. And then I have to try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands like an idiot! Yay. And then you drop the fish and it's hopping around and you panic. So you run up to me post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands that you skipped up off the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave. So we're running out of a frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. And we get him home and get him into a bowl of water but the prognosis is grim. <laughs> And the next day, he's uh, alive and well. They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never will. I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash to the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Yeah, that was gonna happen. Dude, bro, are you okay? You said nice. It's kind of awful. Are you okay? I'm gonna die. Pick up me in hand and looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. It doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. You don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. Thank you! Thank you! You should have told me that in the beginning, but also this person as an adult should know his own limits. I th well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure? Yeah. Oh. Alright, well here. I brought you this. Frank hands me a shaker bottle full of thick green liquid. I stir it with what must be apparent distaste. Oh. It's a protein shade, bro. bro. Oh, thank you. He wants me to drink it. Oh boy, here it goes. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. They are. Depending. Wow, this is really hey. good. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Ew. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood if treadmills aren't your speed. No pun intended, bro. Good one! Well, I'm gonna go put some ice on this everything. <laughs> I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. 
Freddy used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now he can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I really gotta work on that dad bod. Things change, man. Get home and lay down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh god, I'm so cool. So old. I know how that feels. Oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Why do I keep sleeping on this couch? I just said I wouldn't do it ever again. Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be at Amanda's school in five minutes. Oh, butterballs. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Ah! I completely forgot. Again. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. Who's her teacher? Let's find out. It'd be funny if it was Mary from the bar. That would be funny. I didn't give her a drink. And now we're going to talk about my daughter. <sighs> I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait. 103 or 108, I spy a youth standing at his locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? <laughs> the youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Sigh. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? Mr. Vega? I don't know, have you tried the exit? Ah, you dick. Okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me or not? Fine, up the stairs and to the left, can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punky sent me in a while. Good day, so I get back to where well, Rent Jared Way was standing, ready to give him a piece of my mind. Suddenly, a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Oh. Lucian! Lucian, whatever. Don't you have a third period to get to? Sigh, fine, Mr. Oh. Vega. Wow! Now I'm officially ten minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not oh. cool. You missed the iron. The period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Hmm? Mr. Vega leads me in, and I take a seat at one of those comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? Alright, where were we? Who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator and J.D. Sound just catching the rye? Hey! We just played Life is Strange and hung out with Max Caulfield for a while. Let's learn about the other Caulfield. Um... Yes, Colin! Colin stands up and does a thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Oh. <sighs> the whole um... class erupted in laughter. Alright, alright, everybody. Very fallen. Funny Colin. Please sit down. Ah. Now, Holden Caulfield as an unreliable narrator in the sense that... The bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the huh? door. Remember to do the reading and answer the response questions on page 194 of your textbook. Nobody's listening. Hmm? Or not, I guess. Oh, He's trying so hard! Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Oh. Middle schoolers, right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Yeah. Both. You know, budget cuts. I'm starting to feel for you, guy. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Mm -hmm. Please call me Hugo. Hugo Vega. Uh. I don't normally do these impromptu parent-teacher meetings, but as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Oh, what? What's going oh, on? No. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritis, but this is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't crossed my mind that something might be wrong. I don't know. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? How, how long ago, well, we moved. How long ago did we lose her da other dad? We just moved recently, but it was only to the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it oh. than I was. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal and would appreciate your guidance if she keeps heading down this road. <sighs> I know how important art school is to her, and I would just hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. You're so sweet, and you care so much about my daughter! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. Anytime. I'm away and stop thinking for a moment. I turn to Hugo. Ah. Hey, Hugo. Yes. Did he... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did he ever catch that rye? Yes. 
Yay, it made you smile. That was a terrible joke. <laughs> I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her father. Amanda must be done with class for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home, and maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna end here because I want to talk to my daughter. What's going on, my dear sweet Amanda? Please don't throw your life away. I really enjoy what's going on here. Well written. Well, it's really still written like stream of consciousness, and I enjoyed that entire bit about sports ball. But I hope to continue. I still don't know who I want to date yet. Right now, I'm just trying to be friends with everybody. Maybe that's just how I am. But anyway, I hope you all had fun with this episode of Dream Daddy. Uh, and I will catch you all in the next one. Dr. Shot out. Bye!